Hello and welcome to the latest in our series of short Urban Saints additional needs ministry Facebook live events. This one is all about an inclusion champion or church senko. If you haven't come across the term senko before, uh, it's an education term, special educational needs coordinator. The person within an education setting that ensures that all children or young people uh, with additional needs are given uh, access to education uh, and are able to uh, have programs uh, developed for them uh, that help them uh, to be able to attain all that they can within that education setting. But what does that look like in a church setting? That's what we're going to explore for the next 10 to 15 minutes as we, uh, as we understand what difference this can make to you in the church and how you can put a church senko in place in your setting. Do please share, like, comment uh, as you watch this uh, Facebook Live event. Do ask questions. It'd be great to hear from you and to be able to respond to the questions that you've got as we go through this session together. So what does a, a church senko uh, do to help a church to be more inclusive? Well, the most important thing that a church senko can do is to, to look at the things we do in our church, in our children's and youth work, uh, through the eyes of the children, young people and families that we're looking to support. What is their experience of church like? And how can we help that experience to be as good as it can possibly be? For example, if there's a nine-year-old lad with autism uh, in your church who finds that when he arrives at church with his family and it's noisy and there's lots of lights and there's lots of people and lots of smells of perfume and coffee and all sorts of things like that, it can overwhelm him. Uh, and he finds that incredibly hard and it can lead to him having a meltdown. Well, a church senko could work with him and with his family uh, to look at a way of making that transition into church a little easier. Maybe looking at them coming a little earlier to the service and having a space that uh, is available to them each week that can be their own, where they can slowly see the rest of the congregation uh, gathering in and, and that lad can uh, get used to that build up. Uh, of noise and sensory input. Or maybe uh, they could come just after the service has started so it's a little bit quieter uh, and again come to that safe place that they can call their own. But the important thing is that the church senko would engage with that family in exploring that and figuring out with them the best way of making that work for them. Or maybe there's a girl with dyslexia and she loves the worship songs but every time the worship song starts and the slides go up on the screen, they're always uh, in front of one of those beautiful pictures or a video image that's happening uh, behind the words. And, and all that means is that the words just blur before her eyes and, and she can't read the worship songs uh, and sing them effectively. So what would it mean for a church senko to get alongside that, uh, that girl and her family uh, and explore how having a separate screen accessible to everybody that would find that valuable that has a plain background and uses a colour scheme of background and font uh, and style that is fully accessible and is going to work for a range of different additional needs and disabilities. Or what about that moment when uh, our very excited worship leader uh, says to us, let's all stand and worship. And there's somebody that uses a wheelchair. They can't stand. Does that mean they can't worship? And anyway, everybody's now stood in front of them. So all they can see is a, a row of bottoms in front of their light, uh, uh, line of sight. How could that Senko get alongside that person and, uh, and, and, and look creatively at how uh, they could be offered a range of different places uh, to sit, all of which have line of sight to the front uh, of the screen. And that church Senko could also work with the worship leader uh, to just change the words that they use to something like, let's all stand if we're able. So what does the church Senko need to know and understand when they come into this role? Well, many church senkos might come from an education or health or social care background, and that can sometimes be helpful, but it's not essential. 
What's really important, what's really essential, is for that person to be uh, really uh, relational and in the way that they work with the children, young people and families that we're trying uh, to engage with. How can they draw on those families' experiences, uh, understanding more about what they find hard and then relationally working with the rest of the team at church to put in place some changes that would make a real difference. That relational heart, that ability to be able to engage on a personal level uh, with everybody involved is uh, the primary uh, thing that is, is most important uh, for a church Senko to have. What difference, what benefits can having a church Senko mean for your church, for your group, for your children's and youth sessions? What, what, what does that mean uh, on a day-to-day -day level? Well, let me share a story with you uh, of a, a church that I went to a couple of years ago to run a training evening. Uh, and at the end of the training evening, and during that training, I'd been talking about the importance of having a church senko or inclusion champion. Uh, somebody came and spoke to me and said that they were going to be that person for their church. Uh, and they were going to put in place the things that we talked about during uh, the training session. And so uh, you know, they started to put that stuff in place, we gave them a bit of support and help with that as they started on their journey. And I happened to bump into that person uh, a few months ago and I asked her how it was going and uh, what benefits they'd seen to their church uh, since putting that role in place and putting in place the other strategies that we'd explored during the training. And she shared with me that at the time of the training they'd had a couple of children in their group that had additional needs or disabilities. Now, with all the things that they had in place and with her still very active as the church Senko, they were supporting 22 families and the children that came with them. Uh, they'd seen massive transformation in the way that their church responded and the way that their church was inclusive and accessible in a range of ways. It was great to hear that story and that story's not unique. There are many, many more like that across the country where churches have put uh, this in place and, and created that role of a church senko uh, across their children's and youth work, maybe across their whole congregational work as well. Don't forget to keep uh, sharing, liking, uh, commenting, asking questions as uh, you explore this uh, with us uh, and as we look uh, at this important topic of uh, inclusion champions, church senkos, uh, in our settings to help us support children, young people, families uh, with additional needs and disabilities. Remember Jesus' example as well. Jesus, uh, in his uh, ministry on earth, uh, performed many miracles. He reached out to many people. 25 of the 37 miracles that Jesus uh, did that are recorded in the Gospels, uh, he did many more than that, uh, but those that are recorded in the Gospels, uh, 25 out of 37 involved people with a disability of some kind. Jesus reached out to everyone and it's important that we do that too and when we do that uh, we're aligning ourselves with his ministry and his will for us as his church. So where do you get started in putting this role in place? Well, by now you might already be thinking of somebody within your church or your children's or youth work that would be ideal for this role. It might even be you. Uh, you might be thinking, actually, I, I would like to do this myself. But you might be looking for, for where to get started, what to do next, what, uh, what are the ways in which you can get some support. Well, one thing you could do is to join the Additional Needs Alliance Facebook group. If you search on Facebook uh, for Additional Needs Alliance, you'll find us there. And if you ask to join, one of us will add you in very quickly. There are lots of church senkos in this group that would be willing to share their experience, their stories, their tips, their ideas, ways in which you could get started as you explore this in your setting. Or perhaps you'd like to take part in a training programme. Uh, we run a training programme called All Inclusive. Uh, and you can find out more about that at urbansaints.org slash all-inclusive events. Uh, and we have a number of these already planned around the country. You might like to attend one of those or your church might like to host an all-inclusive training event to skill up your team uh, and to prepare uh, as a church synco uh, 
uh, to be able to put in place the things that will make what you do across your children's and youth work and maybe across uh, your congregational work as well uh, more accessible and inclusive. So have a look uh, at what's offered there and see if that would be something uh, that would be helpful for you. You might like to uh, see a role description that would perhaps flesh out in a bit more detail some of the things we've been talking about and more. Well, we've done one for you. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to access a copy of uh, the uh, role description for Church Senko, uh, then if you go to urbansaints.org slash senko, uh, nice easy uh, address to remember, urbansaints.org slash senko, Fill in your details there and we'll send you a copy of this one page um, uh, overview of what a role description for a Senko might look like in your setting. There are lots of ways that we would love to support you, lots of ways in which we would love to stand with you as you look to put uh, this in place and maybe some of the other things uh, that uh, we talk about in our all-inclusive training sessions in place. There are lots of other videos uh, that you can access by uh, going to the urbansaints.org slash additional needs page of our website. And uh, if you go there, you'll find other Facebook live broadcasts that we've done, uh, as well as other videos that will help you uh, and steer you forward as you look at this uh, important subject uh, of inclusion and accessibility uh, within your church. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be able to support you. Uh, so do contact us uh, and let us know how we can help you to put this in place. We really want to hear from you and to be able to give you uh, all the tools you need uh, to be as supportive and as inclusive and as accessible uh, in the work of your children's and youth work and families work uh, as possible. We've got uh, a ministry area that's focused around this uh, and so do look out for more information about that uh, as we put a range of different activities together and more broadcasts like this in the future. Uh, but do keep the conversation going and even through this Facebook broadcast it would be great just to have uh, your questions, your thoughts as they come to mind uh, now or over uh, the, the time ahead uh, and we'll do all we can to respond to that. Thank you uh, for being with us for this short broadcast today. Look out for more in the future uh, as we look to bring more of these uh, all-inclusive Facebook Live events to you in due course. Thank you and goodbye.